Hi there, in this video I want to show this little DC bug boost power supply I bought on eBay. I need a portable battery powered power supply because I'm helping out in a local charity where people can bring non-working items and we are trying to repair them. Often they are just minor faults like broken wires or failed caps and if we can get it working again the device may do many more years of useful service instead of ending prematurely in a landfill. This is the eBay listing and I'm sure it's available for many sellers including AliExpress. There are two variants and this is the beefier version. Although I don't really need 5 amps and 80 watts, the price difference was minor and this one has a cooling fan, which the less powerful version lacks. According to the listing, I can feed anything from 6 volts to 36 volts as input and get 0.6 to 36 volts out regardless of the input voltage. For a first test, I wired the module to get input from a bench power supply and the output is connected to a 100 ohm load resistor, while the red meter shows the output voltage and the blue one the output current. Turning the bench power supply on and the unit comes to life. It is set by default to 12 volts and 5.1 amps. Selecting the output on and oops, minus 12 volts. I hope I just swapped the output wires. Sure enough, that's easily fixed. After swapping the wires, I decided to add the yellow meter to show the input voltage for my bench power supply, which is set to 6.22 volts at the moment. Turning the output on, and this time the output polarity is correct, and we have close enough to 12 volts on the output. Nice. And I can change that to 15 volts easily, and the unit now delivers 145 milliamps on the output. Obviously, the 100 ohm load resistor has a bit of a tolerance. So far, the unit was in CV or constant voltage mode. Let's change the current setting to something less than 145 milliamps to force the unit into CC or constant current mode. Well, it's doing it, but weirdly. It seems the output voltage dropped completely and then gradually built up until the target current flows. Need to look at that a bit closer later. Also, the output current is a bit higher than the target, which is probably because of the limit accuracy of the unit. What happens if I change the input voltage to 20 volts? Not a lot, which is what I expected. Taking the current limit up to 500 milliamps, and now the output voltage is back to the nearly 15 volts and the full current flows. Setting the output voltage to 20 volts, which is the same as the input and everything is as it should within the limits of accuracy. And the same is true for 30 volts output voltage from 20 volts input. Still pulling nearly 300 milliamps at 30 volts output, let's see how low the input voltage can drop without problems. Keeping in mind that the lower the input voltage, the higher the needed input current. I can definitely drop below 6 volts and it still works. 5.5 seems to be the limit and the unit turns the output off. Turns out that pressing the aptly named SW switch allows you to see the input voltage and there is definitely quite a discrepancy between the yellow meter and what the power supply sees. Under load, and this is at low input voltage, there is quite an input current, so there is a noticeable voltage drop on the wire. Keeping an eye on what the power supply shows on its display and I can get to 5 volts while the yellow meter says 5.39. This means with beefy cables this unit may be able to run from a decent 5 volt USB power bank. Time to put it into enclosure and since I recently got myself a 3D printer I decided to give that a try. Instead of reinventing the wheel I found this brilliant box design on Thingiverse by Hartman. It is parameterized in OpenSCAD so you can tweak the box to fit your project. The design includes square and round holes in the front panel which are easy to enable, disable and modify as needed. I leave a link to Hartman's Ultimate Box Maker in the description. Here is the front panel with the module already inserted. The 3D print is a bit rough but I optimized for speed and all this has to do is being functional, not pretty. The front panel slides into a U-shape that forms the bottom of the box and half of the sides. The rear panel slides in the same way as the front and I added vents for the fan. 
There is one hole for the DC input socket and I decided to indicate that the center is positive. With a bit of tweaking I managed to add this hint onto the panel and while I was at it I added the channel name too. The same U-shape that forms the bottom is also used for the top. The one thing that is an issue of the power module itself is that the sticker explaining the positive and negative connections is now hidden once it's being installed and put some red markers on for positive to not reverse the wires again. This is the module all wired up. The white pair is for the connection to the input socket at the rear while the connection to the output terminal posts at the front uses a red black wire pair. Putting the power jack into the socket and the display comes to life. And the multimeter shows that the output is wired the right way around this time. When I'm out and about repairing, the power supply will be fed from the 20 volts DC output of the Edge X100 power bank I reviewed some time ago. I'm already using this power bank to power the Kaiwitz Ketz 02 USB-C soldering iron, so it's in my kit bag anyway. Once the 20 volts DC output is on, the power module is running and it works just fine. And it's finally time to declare this ready and remove the protection foil on the screen. The static caused by that momentarily creates some display artifacts, but they disappear quickly. As an experiment, I want to see if a very average USB power bank can run this power supply as well. The first problem here is of course how to connect it. I still have my old and trusty self mite USB-A adapter with banana sockets which comes in very handy. Works just fine. Of course such a tiny power bank will not be able to support drawing a lot of current from the power supply. On using the power supply in a repair for the first time I found that I could not read the display when it's lying on the desk because in the repair facility I usually work standing at the desk instead of sitting down. This nice tilting bail on Thingiverse solved my problem and after printing it I glued it to the box. The folding foot design comes from a user called Rubberport Design and I leave a link in the description. So far you have seen me using this thing but I have not explained how to operate it. Let's cover that quickly. If the output is off, the bottom line cycles between the selected voltage and current settings. Those values will be used when the output is turned on, which is done with a button under the rotary encoder. Pressing SW for a long time of several seconds gets you into the settings which you can cycle through by short presses of SW. First is LVP for low voltage input protection. The default is 4.7 volts. If the input voltage drops to this or lower, the unit turns the output off. Similar but on the opposite side is OVP or input over voltage protection. It is set to 37 volts by default. OCP is the overcurrent protection for the output. It is set to 5.2 amps by default. OPP is the overpower protection for the output. It is set to 82 watts by default. OAH is the overcapacity protection in amp hours. It is not set by default and only useful if you use the unit to charge a battery. Also for charging batteries you can set OPH or over energy protection in watt hours. And finally for battery charging you can set OHP which defines the maximum runtime in hours and minutes. Then we have PON which is set to OFF by default. It defines if the output is by default on or off when the unit starts. And finally there is FAT which defines whether the unit is in by default in constant voltage CV or constant current CC mode. Another long press of SW gets you out of settings. Outside the settings menu pressing SW replaces the output voltage display on the first line with the input voltage like here the input is 12 volts. Pressing SW again goes back to display the output voltage. To set or change the output voltage press VA until the bottom line shows set CV. Then pressing the rotary encoder moves the blinking cursor through the value and turning the encoder changes the digits. Wait for a few seconds and the unit saves the new value. For current it's the same procedure, 
but press VA until the bottom line shows set CC and proceed the same way as for voltage. If you do not want to accidentally change values, pressing the rotary button for 2 seconds locks the unit and you see a small blinking padlock on the display. Note that in locked mode you can still turn the output off, which is a good safety feature. To unlock it's the same procedure, pressing the rotary button for 2 seconds until the padlock disappears. When the output is on, for example for charging a battery, pressing the rotary button cycles the lowest line from the default displaying power in watts to capacity in amp hours, energy in watt hours and finally run time. These counters are zeroed when the output is turned on. Remember that weird behavior at the beginning when changing the set current value so that the constant current mode kicks in? Well, here it is in all its glory. The output collapses to basically zero and then recovers in steps until it reaches a new voltage that corresponds to the selected current. That takes time, nearly 8 seconds. It can be a problem if the unit at the output resets unexpectedly while the output voltage collapses, but I don't think it's much to worry about. I rarely change the setting to constant current while it's already operating. Changing the set current value back so the mode switches from constant current back to constant voltage goes much faster. 740 milliseconds in this case and without a complete collapse. That's good because raising the current setting during operation is a case that happens often. Normally, constant current is triggered not by editing the set value, but by the load current increasing, as here, where it jumped from 300 milliamps to 900 milliamps with a set value at 500 milliamps. This is much better. The voltage drops within about 100 milliseconds from 6 volts to 3.3 volts. There's a little spike, but that should not cause trouble. Here's the reverse. The current suddenly drops below the set value before the output voltage reaches the previous set 6 volts constant voltage, there is some irregular bouncing going on which is me unplugging the load resistor that was in parallel with the normal load. There is, however, an overshoot which is almost a volt for about 5 milliseconds. This is not great, but I guess most loads are not too bothered with that. The output is off with current mode set to 500 milliamps, constant voltage is set to 6 volts and at 300 milliamp load connected. So the unit is in constant voltage mode. When the output is turned on, the voltage rises smoothly over about 250 milliseconds to 6 volts. No problem here. Let's see what happens when the output is turned off. Basically the reverse, the output drops in about 250 milliseconds back to zero. Let's try it again with the same setting but a load of 900 milliamps connected. This means the unit should start straight into constant current mode and limit the output to about 3.3 volts instead of 6 volts. That's a weird start. Moreover, after half a screen, that is 10 times 50 milliseconds or half a second, the voltage is still less than 3 volts. I need to run this again with a much slower time base. 200 milliseconds per division or 4 seconds for the whole screen is still not slow enough to capture the whole event. Let's run it again at 1 second per division. Please ignore the artifact at the beginning of the scan line. We have a staircase effect again. Well, eventually after 5.5 seconds or possibly more, the voltage does reach its target of 3.3 volts in constant current mode. More worrying is again the overshoot at the beginning where the voltage reaches 4 volts for maybe 100 to 150 milliseconds before the electronic in the supply reacts and curbs it down. I would guess the sensing and responding is done by a microcontroller which explains the staircase and these spikes indicate how fast or rather slow, it can react. While the power supply is in constant current mode of 500 milliamps, let's have a quick look at the ripple and noise. The scope claims an RMS value of 7 millivolts. Removing the extra load drops the current to 300 milliamps, which means the unit is now in constant voltage mode. After the AC coupling capacitor has handled the DC voltage jump, the noise looks marginally less, although the RMS value is still 7 millivolts. 
removing all load so now the current is zero and this is the idle constant voltage noise it is definitely much less and the rms value is just three millivolts if loaded in constant voltage mode with one amp the ripple is 20 millivolts i think this is acceptable for what this unit is for finally efficiency which is interesting for battery power devices this is a bug boost converter and of course efficiency depends on input voltage output voltage and output current these are too many variables to test them all so here are just a few the blue trace shows the efficiency when varying the input voltage while the output is fixed to 12 volts and about 300 milliamps the efficiency varies between 64 and 75 percent with a peak at 8 volts higher input voltages make it less efficient the next three graphs with the red traces are for input voltages of 24 volts 12 volts and 6 volts for each graph the output voltage was set to 12 volt and the output current increases from 200 milliamps onwards in all three the power supply is less efficient with lower output currents in the 24 volt case for loads greater than about 800 milliamps it gets more efficient with increase in load in the 12 volt case for loads greater than 800 milliamps efficiency stays about the same and in the 6 volt case after 400 milliamps current efficiency drops fast with increased load current in summary there isn't a particular good or bad combination that's worth targeting efficiency is about 70 percent on average that means for 10 watts output power you need to feed in about 14 watts from the battery it is worth remembering that lower input voltage means high input current when the power supply is loaded this input current may exceed what the battery can deliver and thus limits the use of the power supply I don't have to worry about that with my Edge X100 as a source, but the high input current is the reason why the graph for the 6 volt case doesn't even go to 1 amp output current. For 1 amp output at 6 volts input, the input current would have exceeded the max 3 amps available on the bench power supply I used for making these graphs. All in all, I think this unit meets my specific needs for which I want it and it has now a permanent home in my repair tool bag. There are some portable USB-C power supplies out there, for example the Finerci DSP150, but these are way more expensive than this solution. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe and maybe consider becoming a Patreon. That would really help this channel. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching.